We're running at about 94.5% of capacity right now. Uh, and of course, you always want to run more in, in, in this environment. But the fact of the matter is, uh, we have also cut off available lands for permits and leases. And of the leases and permits that we have, fully a quarter of them are being challenged by environmental groups. And that can monkey up things in that process for years. To say nothing of restrictions the administration and others have pushed on the industry to eventually signal that they want to go away from fossil fuels in the next few years. So if you're an industry giant and this is a multi-billion dollar investment and you know that the intention is to close out your entire energy commitment, would you commit that dough? That is really the 64, I guess, gazillion dollar question. Let's go to Carl Rove on this because this issue of now suddenly rising energy prices, for example, we were up in oil, as you know, Carl, up 14.6% just last week. Gas prices now 15 days running after 99 days declining. Um, it's a mess. What do you think? Well, we've left out one piece of the puzzle, Neil. Let me talk to you about it refining. Small refiners are obligated to get air emission credits called RINs. And the policy of the government set under law is that if they can't get credits in a marketplace, if there are no credits available in the marketplace, they then get granted an exemption by the federal government. Well, the federal government has, under this administration, has announced that it will never give these small refiners an exemption even if there is nothing in the marketplace that they can buy. And in addition, they're going to go back the last four years, revoke the exemptions they granted them, and tell them to pay up. And I've talked to a couple of these small refiners. It's going to put small refineries around the country out of, the, out, of, out of business, and it's going to drive up the prices thereby for gasoline localized. And it's going to start happening now because the federal government has said, pay up. We're going to go back for the, retroactively for the last four years and withdraw the, the exemption for RINs that we granted you, and now here's your bill. Pay it. I think it's, it's lost on a lot of people who are, are looking at the oil industry as the culprit. The administration has led that. I didn't want to go on a tangent on this, Carl, but I did want to remind people the oil industry likes to make money. They like to make money hand over yeah. fist if they can. It is in their selfish interest. That's capitalism. Now, when you are putting a shelf life or, or a limit or setting a goal right. in the next few years, you want to cut back on, on, the, on fossil fuels, if not eliminate in some states like California and New York, go all electric vehicles in the next 12, 13 years. You are telling that industry you can go ahead and build and expand all you want. But you're 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 investing in a in a no future. So what what CEO worth his or her salt would want to risk that? Yeah, well, they'd have to take a look at the how the investment, the amount of the investment. How long would it take to recoup it? What's the shelf life? What's the you know the, the plant that the refinery that they're building or the exploration they're undertaking? How long is it going to take? How long can that last? How long will that field, for example, produce? How long is the life of that? Refinery, and you're right. It's an economic decision. It may not make sense for them, Let and it will therefore not make sense for the American economy. And right. it's a precipitous. Rather than allowing this to happen organically, this is some bright brain in Washington saying we're going to be able to do this by this time, and therefore I'm going to take this action. And life doesn't work out that way. Well, we know how life is working out the new way now in this new environment in Europe, where you know countries that have been leading on climate change are now re reverting to coal, to nuclear, to anything, uh, just to get over this serious energy hump we've not followed up. But that's a whole separate argument. I do want to get to how this is all sort of baking into the midterm elections, Carl. Uh, and, and at this point, inflation is a top concern. These are big worries for Democrats. We're seeing some distancing themselves on, from the president on this approach and what have you. But I'd like to get your sense of where it puts the Senate battles. Where do you see that? Well, the Senate is, uh, is a difficult picture for the Republicans because there are 21 Republicans up and only 14 Democrats. None of the Democrats are up in states that Donald Trump won. And two of the Republican seats are up in uh, up in Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, an open seat in Pennsylvania, Senator Ron Johnson, incumbent in Wisconsin. Those seats are st in states that uh, Joe Biden won, albeit by a very small margin. The Republicans are likely, I think, they have a good chance of holding all uh, uh, both of those seats and holding then three other seats that are up for grabs in this election that are in Republican states. But to take the majority, the Republicans have to win in a state that Joe Biden won in, which means they got to take Nevada or Georgia or Arizona or, or Colorado or New Hampshire or Washington State. 
and it's tough to win in that kind of territory, but they, they are winning. In Nevada, Adam Laxalt, six polls in September, and he's led in every one. The race in Georgia is a tight race. Uh, we'll see how the others develop. But I think the Republicans have a good chance of taking the Senate, albeit by a narrow margin, 51-49. And, and it may take until December in order to do that, because uh, in Georgia, you have to get 50 percent of the vote. There are three candidates on the ballot, and if nobody gets 50 percent, there's a runoff between the top two on December 6th. That's right. There's a libertarian candidate in the Georgia race, right? right. So that would right. divide that. His up. name is Neil Cavuto. Yeah. I, I, I think that's maybe an accident. <laughs> that could, yeah, that could be that could be nutty. By the way, you mentioned Georgia, but real quickly, the Herschel Walker fallout on the abortion or not abortion payment. I'm, I'm just wondering. Uh, uh, polls don't include this period exclusively, but part of them do. Any fallout? Uh, I think there will be fallout. The question is how much, and, uh, and and you know he has an enormous reservoir of goodwill in the state, and it is uh, it's going to see it's going to be a real test of that of that reservoir to see uh, how much fallout there is on this. Uh, you know we're at the point where a lot of voters have made up their minds, and the, the number of people who have not is relatively small, but that could be determinative in this race. We'll see. Thank you, Carl, very very much. Good seeing you again.